All right, we are going to get started. I'll introduce myself. My name is Joey Pena. I'm the Cannabis Process Navigator for the Department of Excise and Licenses. And we are doing a webinar series to help introduce folks to Denver's Online Permitting and Licensing Center for Marijuana Licensees. I am um, hosting this week our Change of Location uh, webinar to do a demonstration and show you how to apply for your change of location online. And next week, we will be doing a transfer of ownership amendment webinar um, to help folks understand um, how to complete a transfer of ownership application online and uh, how to update their um, ownership structures online and also how to complete a concurrent change of ownership and change of location. For today, we're going to be focusing on that transfer of location application. And I am joined by Audra Miller. Audra, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, um, my name is Audra Miller and I'm a management analyst in Excise and Licenses. And I work on bringing all of our licenses online. And I also work on our website and all of the training videos and things like that. Excellent. Thanks, Audra. Audra was one of the primary architects of um, the system and a lot of the efficiencies that we're going to see from the system. And so um, she has been a tremendous resource to us. Um, Audra and um, her colleague, Rod. Rod is not in the office this week. Um, he is out taking a, a much needed and much deserved break. Um, if you do have questions, we just request that you would pop those into the Q&A. Um, so that we can answer them uh, sort of as we go or at the end, um, there will be time for questions. I'm going to kick us off with just a brief presentation to talk more about changes of location um, and some really critical information that I want to share with you um, because I think it's important. We, you know, there are some things that often get overlooked when folks are um, applying for a change of location. And so really want to, to review that information before we jump into our demonstration. I am going to get started by sharing my screen. And we will kick off this brief presentation. The reason we're here today, Marijuana Business Licenses Online. As all of you know, we've transitioned our Marijuana Business Licenses um, to the Online Permitting and Licensing Center. Um, and as a result, our, for most of our marijuana business licenses, all applications, including their renewals and amendments, are going to be submitted through the Online Permitting and Licensing Center going forward. Today, we are talking about change of location applications. Again, sort of an overview, our new application processes. Our applications for most marijuana business licenses, including new business license, renewal, modification of premise, change of location, and change of ownership applications, must now be submitted through Denver's Online Permitting and Licensing Center. We are going through the process now of transitioning all of our existing licenses to the Online Permitting and Licensing Center. And from here forward, the licenses that are transitioned will be interacting with the system to file those applications. Uh, the exception, for now is testing and research and development facilities. Um, they will continue to use Piper applications. Um, and our hope, our goal is that we would be able to bring them online in 2023. Tips for getting started. If you've joined me before, um, you know that these first few slides are, are sort of an introduction. They're, they're fairly um, basic. You'll see them in each of these presentations. And then we're going to talk more specifically about our topic today, change of location. But Tips for getting started in terms of the web browser, we do recommend that you use Safari or Chrome web browsers for an optimal user experience. We recommend in terms of preparation that you visit our website for the required documents and information before you begin your application. And we'll pop over to our website in just a bit to look through some of that. And then required documents, we recommend that you gather all of your required documents and information before, your, before you start your um, application and uh, that you, save all required documents as a PDF or JPEG file only. We will not be able to accept other file types. So be sure as you're gathering those required documents 
that that information is saved as a PDF or JPEG file only. For changes of location, we have a slide that I put together called required reading. Um, we highly, highly, highly recommend that prior to submitting a change of location application, you review the zoning and location requirements for marijuana businesses in the marijuana facility location guide, and that you refer to the Denver Revised Municipal Code, Chapter 6, Article 5, for rules regarding transfers of location. In particular, review Section 6.220 of the Denver Revised Municipal Code for some provisions applicable to transfers of location for marijuana businesses. This is really critical because Section 6.220E refers to changes of location of marijuana stores. And that provision in the code says that an application to change location of a medical or retail marijuana store license shall not be approved unless two provisions, one, all other medical or retail marijuana cultivation facility licenses and medical or retail marijuana store licenses at the former location, likewise apply to change to the same new location, or two, all other medical or retail marijuana cultivation facility licenses and medical or retail marijuana store licenses at the former location are surrendered. What does this mean? Essentially, for a change of location of a marijuana store that's co-located with a marijuana cultivation, if you are going to submit a change of location for that marijuana store, you must also move the cultivation to the same new location, or you must plan to surrender that cultivation license. Both of those licenses move together, or one of those licenses is surrendered. This is important because it refers to stores. Section 6220F refers to a change of location of a marijuana cultivation facility. This says that we cannot approve a change of location of a marijuana cultivation facility, an application to change location of a medical or retail marijuana cultivation facility license shall not be approved unless all other medical or retail marijuana cultivation facility licenses and medical or retail marijuana store licenses at the former location likewise apply to change to the same new location. Two, all other medical or retail marijuana cultivation facility licenses and medical or retail marijuana store licenses at the former location are surrendered. Or three, the application proposes that the medical or retail marijuana cultivation facility license will change to a location where another medical or retail marijuana cultivation facility is licensed. So in a similar example, if we have a co-located store and cultivation, a retail store and a retail cultivation, and I want to move my cultivation to a new location, either the store has to move with it, the store has to be surrendered, or the cultivation is moving to a location where another cultivation exists and is licensed. There are very, important nuances in a lot of this, this language around changes of location. And so we heavily recommend that you are talking with your attorneys and consultants um, prior to submitting an application. And that if you have any questions about uh, change of location language or whether specific scenarios may be, um, may be acceptable, um, the department cannot make any sort of um, predetermination on an application. Um, we cannot provide any sort of pre-approval or conditional approval of a change of location. Um, so if you were to reach out, um, we cannot approve that before an application is submitted. You would have to ultimately submit an application to know, but we do recommend that through some of this due diligence, um, you may be able to know at least before you submit the application with some degree of confidence whether the change of location is likely or not likely to comply with these provisions. Um, if you have questions about this, we ask that you would um, email marijuanainfo at denvergov.org. For questions about 
specific sort of change of location and and how the Denver Revised Municipal Code language may impact your ability to change location, um, email marijuanainfo at denvergov.org. That is going to be a bit different from whether you're um, having some issues with maybe submitting your change of location online, then we ask you to submit your inquiry to a different email address, which we'll come to in a bit. But if you're talking specifically about that Denver Revised Municipal Code language, please do email marijuanainfo at denvergov.org. You're going to see this in just a few minutes, but the first steps to apply for a change of location, you log in to Denver's Online Permitting and Licensing Center. Under Business, Short-Term Rental and Occupational Licensing, you'll click Renew or Manage. You find the row with the licensed establishment record name and address you want to modify. And in the right column, you click Amendment. Then you select Initiate Transfer of Location and click Continue Application. Resources for navigating our online processes. You can visit Denver's Medical and Retail Marijuana Licenses and Permits webpage. I'll bring that up here in just a few minutes to show you how to navigate to um, some of our other resources. We have online training videos, extremely helpful that Audra has put together um, that um, can walk you through uh, all different sorts of processes. We have a webpage for those videos um, that you'll find online as well. This webinar will be posted on the apply for a change of location of a marijuana business online webpage and a step-by-step -step guide and required information and documents can also be found on the apply for a change of location of a marijuana business online webpage. And then in terms of your application, if you need support, we ask that you email exoapplications at denvergov.org to request help. Please do not copy other aliases. Um, please do not copy marijuana info at denvergov.org. Please do not copy exl submit at denvergov.org. Please do not copy other individuals. That will create duplicate Salesforce cases and you will not receive a response. It, it's much more likely that those, those cases get closed as duplicates um, if you copy other aliases. So please submit those requests for support directly to exl applications at denvergov.org. Audra and her team are fantastic and have been fielding a lot of questions in that, in that email inbox um, for things that are, I think, more heavily technical. And then if you copy other aliases or individuals, you are going to be asked to resubmit that inquiry directly to EXO applications at denvergov.org. That will delay our ability to respond. Um, obviously, I had just said a few minutes ago, if it is more of a policy question, if you're talking more about what may be possible in terms of um, location, and the Denver Revised Municipal Code language, then an email marijuanainfo at denvergov.org. There's no need to copy anyone else, but that is really sort of in the policy realm. Um, EXL applications, this is where we want you to go if you need support with your online permitting and licensing center account, um, or if you're having trouble with your application. I'm going to exit out and bring up our website here. So this is Denver's Online Permitting and Licensing Center. What you'll see is our medical and retail marijuana licenses and permits webpage, where we have jumping off points to all of our web pages to initiate different applications. Um, we have apply new, transition or renew, apply for a modification of premise, and apply for a transfer of location. Next week, we are going to be talking more about the transfer of ownership process. So I would really encourage you to tune in because I think we get a lot of questions about transfers of ownership. That is going to be, I think, a very helpful um, webinar for, for many people to attend. Um, for this week, the apply for a transfer of location. I've called up that web page here. What you'll see is at the top, we have more of that information context for our transition to the online permitting and licensing center. We also have a link to the online training videos web page. We have that again down here. We heavily recommend that you, you watch the, the online training videos before initiating your application. We have that information about um, changes of location with links to the marijuana facility location guide and the Denver revised municipal code, that section 6220 that I mentioned in the presentation. And as you go down, you'll see step-by-step -step processes that talk about um, how the application is submitted and after the application is submitted and fees are paid, what the city application review and inspection process looks like. Um, it includes 
for stores and hospitality businesses, hospitality and sales businesses as well. Um, there is a public needs and desires hearing. Um, and for all changes of location, there would be um, inspection requirements. So we ask that you read through these steps and then at the bottom, required forms, required fees, and the inspection process. So as you click through, you'll see what the required forms would be. On your floor plan, we do recommend that you read the floor plan requirements document that we have. I don't believe the link's up there yet, but that's my fault. I'm gonna get with Audra and make sure that that link is updated um, so that the floor plan requirements form is on the website for you to review. This is, um, this provides sort of a, an overview of what the um, requirements are for your floor plan. If you're submitting um, a new business license application or a change of location, we just need the proposed floor plan for the um, new premises where you would be locating your licenses. Um, so we do ask that you review this carefully, that you're sure that your um, application submission, that your floor plan submission um, meets all of these requirements, uh, which, will, um, which will help us um, move your application through our processes much more quickly. And with that, we're going to pop over to the Online Permitting and Licensing Center. I am already logged in. So when you log in to the Online Permitting and Licensing Center, I can, under Business, Short-Term Rental and Occupational Licensing, click Renew or Manage. This is for a transfer of location. I'm going to pop back over to our step-by-step. -step, and what you'll see is that we do have those step-by-step -step, um, uh, processes here. And this amendment is initiated out of the licensed establishment record name and address. So back, what we'll see is I'm looking for my licensed establishment. This is where my licenses live. All of my licenses that I have applied for live at 201 West Colfax Avenue. I have my licensed establishment, which houses all of those licenses. So I am going to, in the action column, click amendment, and I am going to click initiate transfer of location. We will continue application. This provides me with an overview of the documents that I will be required to provide. Um, sorry about that. Of the documents that I will be required to provide. Um, as I work through my application process and sort of a step-by-step -step guide to what I may need to be doing. So here we go. We're going to get started. This says enter the new street number and street name for your license establishment. So this is where I would be moving my licenses. Then click search to validate the address. So I am looking at this and wanting to provide the new address where I will be moving my licenses. I'm going to be moving a license to 1200 Federal. Provides me with more information. It is 1200 North Federal. This auto selects my parcel number and the associated owner. I'm gonna click select. If you are not sure of your parcel number, you can select the very first parcel number. And then I am going to answer this question. Do you operate out of multiple unit suites, et cetera? No. If I answer yes, it will prompt me to provide the details of those additional suites or units. The answer for this, for our purposes today, is going to be no. And then I'm going to con click continue application. Now, which of your licenses would you like to transfer to a new location today? Read this very carefully. Check the box next to the license, licenses attached to this license establishment that you would like to transfer, then click on the edit button and check the transfer box. So for this first demonstration, I am gonna work through two transfers of location so you can see what this looks like. I am just going to be transferring my manufacturing license to 1200 Federal. As we sort of reviewed in that presentation, if I were going to transfer my store or my cultivation license, there are going to be um, provisions that may limit my ability to do certain things with those two licenses. So I am going to be transferring those together to another location in a separate application. For our purposes now, I'm going to select my manufacturer license. 
I'm going to click edit. And I'm going to click transfer. Submit and continue application. This is a review page. This is the last chance that I have to edit this information. So if I have entered an incorrect address, this is my last chance to edit that information before I complete this process. Later in the application process, I cannot change this address. I would have to withdraw my application and resubmit if I entered the incorrect address. So 1200 North Federal Boulevard, this is the address where I'll be transferring my manufacturing license. This asks basic questions. I'm initiating a transfer of location. This is the address. I don't operate out of additional suites or units. And then here you'll see a list of all of my licenses. And under transfer, there is a yes next to the manufacturer license. So this is going to initiate a transfer just for my manufacturer license, not for my other two. I'm going to read very carefully the oath of application, select and create my application package. I have my license establishment application, which I'm going to start. You'll see here, as I mentioned before, I am not able to edit this information for the address. The address had to be correct in that previous step because we've now created a license establishment record for 1200 North Federal Boulevard. If this is incorrect, I will have to stop, withdraw the application or, um, or, or have the application removed and then reapply. This is the correct application for our purposes today or the correct address for our purposes today. So I'm going to continue application. This provides me with all the information I'm going to need for my new licensed establishment where I'm moving my manufacturing license, the location name, zoning use permit or acknowledgement of zoning use permit, the possession of property certificate or a lease or deed, um, a floor plan that is going to meet the requirements for marijuana licensing. So those floor plan requirements that I had showed you before. Um, a copy of the new burglar alarm monitoring contract for the manufacturing license at that location, and a copy of the burglar alarm permit. It's also going to ask for on-site manager information that I'm going to provide. I'm going to continue my application. Excellent. So here, the location name, I am going to name Federal. I'm going to continue my application. And here, under my on-site manager information, this is required. I am going to add myself as the on-site manager for this location. And submit. We have my name, home address, city, state, zip, date of birth direct phone number, email address, and my position. Continue my application. This is going to ask if I own or rent the property. I'm going to select rent, which is going to ask the question, what's the expiration date of your lease? I'm going to put 1, 1, 20, 30 and continue. And now for my required documents, I'm going to upload my zoning use permit or acknowledgement of zoning use permit. Um, I'm going to provide a possession of property certificate, lease or deed, a burglar alarm monitoring contract, a burglar alarm permit, or, and my floor plan. So for the zoning use permit, the very first thing, we're going to go to my desktop, which is a bit of a mess right now, and application documents. So for 1200, I mix those up, that's okay. So I'm going to, for my manufacturing, I'm going to go into my licensed establishment and I'm going to get my zoning use permit for this location. I'm going to get my possession of property certificate, my burglar alarm monitoring contract, my burglar alarm permit, and my floor plan. 
when I continue my application, I'm going to look over this information, review it to be sure that it is all correct. The license establishment address, you'll notice that I cannot edit that. You'll notice, is this a part of a TOO package? A TOO being a transfer of ownership? The answer to that is no, but we will show you next week what a concurrent transfer of ownership and transfer of location looks like. This has the location information. I've named this federal um, so that I can easily manage my license at federal um, in the future. Uh, having that name just sort of gives me an indicator of the licenses that I'm working with. Um, the information about my on-site manager, the possession of the license establishment, asking whether I own or rent. Um, if I had made a mistake here and I owned the property, then I would edit that information here. I have the expiration date of my lease, so double checking that this is correct. And then I have uploaded all of my documents, my zoning use permit, my possession of property certificate, my floor plan, my burglar alarm permit, and my burglar alarm monitoring contract. These are all saved as PDFs um, because documents have to be saved as PDFs or JPEGs. I'm going to accept my oath of application and continue. You'll see that this now says complete edit. So I've completed the license establishment piece here. And I'm going to start the amendment for the license. Um, this is going to ask me for some very basic information. Um, I'm going to have to provide an alarm permit number and a social impact plan. Depending on the marijuana licenses that I'm transferring, I might also need a copy of a Denver city sales tax license. If I'm a store and I'm transferring my location, my city sales tax license should reflect the new address. And an odor control mitigation or ventilation plan if I'm a hospitality business uh, moving into a new premise. Um, that would assume that the odor control mitigation or ventilation plan is changing as well. Continue my application. Here, alarm permit number. I'm going to put in some stock information. Continue my application. And now my social impact plan is the only document that is required. And I'm going to, I have my social impact plan here. My social impact plan, I've added that. Continue my application. My social impact plan will change because I will be moving to a new neighborhood or into a new location. And so uh, the location, the registered neighborhood organizations, for example, um, that I work with may be changing. So we do require that social impact plan on the transfer of location. And then here again with the oath of application, read it very carefully. I'm making sure that my alarm permit information is correct. Um, I've uploaded my social impact plan. I can continue my application. And now what you'll see is both of these are complete and I have the submit application package button here. I'm going to click submit application package. And this tells me that my combined amend number is here. The new LE for this North Federal Boulevard is this number. And this was the 201 West Colfax Avenue package. So when I go back in to my records and my business licenses, I'm going to see the new LE for 1200 North Federal. I'm going to see the combined amend. So my pay fees due because I have to pay before the application will be reviewed. Um, so I will pay my fee and then my application will go to a licensing technician for review. Um, this is my transfer of location request. So I will pay the fees due there. Um, and you will see this is my package for initiating that transfer of location. It has been submitted, but it is awaiting payment. So it will not be reviewed until I make that payment. Um, I'm going to run through one more of these because I have moved my manufacturing license or I have applied to move my manufacturing license. I am going to show you one more time, just quickly. And let me go back so that we can, I can explain a little bit better. So from 201 West Colfax, I have applied to move my manufacturing license. You'll see my manufacturing license here at 201 West Colfax. I've applied to move this to 1200 North Federal. Now, I would like to apply to move my store and my cultivation. I can do that pursuant to those provisions in the Denver Revised Municipal Code and be sure that I have a reasonable degree of confidence that my 
Uh, change of the location would meet the, the requirements in the code as well as any applicable location or zoning restrictions. So I'm going to click initiate transfer of location, continue application. This has information about the steps that are going to be required for me to submit my amendment package. Read this all very carefully for the information that you're going to be required to provide. I'm going to click get started. And for my store and cultivation license, I am going to move this to 1241 Bayard. I'm going to search. I am going to, it asks if I operate out of multiple unit suites, et cetera. I'm going to say no. Continue my application. And now again, that question, which of your licenses would you like to transfer to a new location today? The code would prohibit me from splitting these two licenses unless the cultivation was moving to a location with another cultivation. Um, there's quite a bit here that we would ask that you just really carefully review the Denver Revised Municipal Code, um, ask any relevant questions about how that might work. I'm going to check the box next to these two licenses. Um, I'm going to click Edit Selected. And it's going to ask me the records that I'd like to transfer. I'm going to select Transfer for both the Marijuana Store and the Marijuana Cultivation Facility License and Submit. And then I'm going to, you see here in the transfer column, I have yes and yes next to those two licenses. I'm going to continue my application. Again, this is the last chance I'll have to edit this information before I start my next step. 1241 West Bayard Avenue. This is very critical that I make sure that this is correct. If it's not correct, I'm going to have to start all over. It's asking if I operate out of additional units or suites. Again, very important that this is correct. If not, I start all over. And then here, the records that I'm going to transfer, you'll see yes next to my store and my cultivation. Those are the two licenses that I've selected to transfer to 1241 West Bayot Avenue. I'm going to read that oath of application very carefully and create my application package. And this is all going to start to feel very familiar. I'm going to have a new license establishment for that 1241 West Bayot. You'll see again, I cannot edit this information. This was never provided. This information is not editable. So I will continue my application. Here, the information about the required documents that I'll provide, as well as the information about my on-site manager, all required. I'm going to continue my application. The location name, I'm going to call Bayaud and I'm naming each of them just after my, the street where those, those licenses will be so that in the future, I can sort of manage all of my licenses by their name. I like to think of this as um, sort of like our grocery stores or convenience stores. Often you'll see um, for uh, you know, document management purposes and other things, um, the location name might be a, a store number, store number 10, um, so that uh, when you're collecting your documents, you can have everything in, in separate folders and, and really sort of streamlined. I'm gonna continue my application. Asking for that on-site manager information. So again, that's gonna be me. And I'm going to submit. Make sure that all of that information is correct. I'm going to continue. It asks the question of whether I own or rent the property. I am going to select own for this. You'll see that if I select own, there's not another question here. If I select rent, oops, sorry. If I select rent, it's going to ask for that expiration date of your lease. For today's purposes, I'll select own and continue the application. And now it's going to ask me for all of that information, the zoning use permit or the acknowledgement of zoning use permit, the possession of property certificate, the burglar alarm monitoring contract, burglar alarm permit, and the floor plan. I'm going to go through this. And actually, 
like I had said, I had mixed up these two um, addresses, but for our purposes today, it's not so super important. The zoning use permit, I'm gonna pop that in there. The possession of property certificate. Burglar alarm monitoring contract. And the burglar alarm permit. the floor plan, continue my application. It'll provide me with all of this information. Again, I can't adjust my address at this stage. My on-site manager information, it's my location name. There is no lease expiration date because I indicated that I own the property and then all of my required documents here. I'm going to Accept the oath of application, which I've read carefully. Continue my application. You'll see the complete edit, but I cannot submit the application package because I have not completed this transfer of location request. So I'm going to start. Because I am transferring a store, I will be asked for a Denver City sales tax license. So I'm going to continue. It's going to ask for that alarm permit information for the new location. And then the Denver sales tax license, this is for my store. So here, my city sales tax license. And again, my social impact plan for the licenses that I'm moving to Bayaud. I'll continue my application. Review this information to be sure that it's correct. My alarm permit number that I have the correct required documents that are uploaded, my city sales tax license for the store. I'm gonna select yes or um, agree to the oath of application. Continue my application. You'll see that both of these now say complete or edit and I can submit my application package. I'm gonna quickly back, uh, run back into my records so that you can see what that looks like now. I should have two records that require a fee due. You see that I have a new combined amend and the LE, the new LE record for 1241 West Bayod. And in my record, I'm prompted to pay fees due for both of those combined amends. You'll see that for the combined amend moving to Bayod, I had two licenses. There's only one amendment record ID. So this is a change from our previous um, paper application processes where every license was assigned an amendment record ID um, for every license that's touched by this change, this transfer of location. So for the store and the cultivation, when I'm calling for my inspections, I'm only calling for this one combined amend. So this really streamlines the number of records that I'm having to manage. Um, so with multiple licenses, um, if I were modifying my premise, for example, and I had six licenses, medical and retail store, medical and retail cultivation, medical and retail MIP, and they were all at one location and I uh, all commonly owned, and I was initiating a, um, a modification of premise, I would have um, one amendment record ID for all six of those licenses for that one modification of premise that's touching the entire license establishment. So I'm going to click pay fees due. So this will prompt you to pay the fees. So here you'll see that I have a $1,500 fee for a marijuana transfer of location. That is for the store because the store requires a, a public needs and desires hearing. That is a higher um, application and license fee. And then the transfer of location fee for $1,000 is for my cultivation. So I would continue. Remember that we cannot have an application reviewed until those fees are paid. I'll show you the other pay fees due. This is the $1,000 for the manufacturing license. It does not include a, a um, public needs and desires hearing. So the fee for that is lower. So I would continue to pay my fees. And that is the process for submitting a change of location application. I'm going to stop my screen share now, check in on our Q&A. I don't see any open questions. 
Um, but now would be a great time if you do have questions to pop them into the Q&A. I've got Audra um, and Abby has joined us. Abby Borchers is a policy analyst with the department. Um, uh, Abby, uh, so you know, um, as we were sort of talking about the um, language in the Denver Revised Municipal Code um, for those change of location provisions, um, particularly around stores and cultivations and the rules for how stores and cultivations are allowed to change location. Um, I advise that the, the folks on the call, if they have questions about that information, um, that they would contact marijuana info at denvergov.org. Um, if they needed to know more about location or zoning restrictions, um, obviously I directed them to the marijuana um, facility location guide. But if they're curious more about the policy and uh, have questions about the nuance of um, it's 6220 in the Denver Revised Municipal Code, I advise that they reach out to marijuana info at denvergov.org and we'll handle those questions separately from questions about the actual application process. Hey, Joey, um, yeah. I don't know, like, did you also make it clear that to do a transfer of location, you have to actually have the licenses online before you can request a transfer of location? I did not make that clear, but that's a great distinction, Audra. Um, and so that goes back to sort of the very first webinar that we did um, for the folks who are on the call, and that is transitioning your licenses online. That is the very, very first requirement um, for you to be able to initiate an application. Your licenses are not just going to appear in the Denver Online Permitting and Licensing Center. You, the, your action is required. You do have to transition every license and quickly, because that is a very good point. And there is a question in the Q&A. Um, so Audra raises a very good point. Um, when you go to our medical and retail marijuana licenses and permits webpage, as I said, my licenses don't automatically appear here. Just because I have had them for 10 years or however long, my licenses aren't just popping up under business licenses, my records. My action is required. And so from the medical and retail marijuana licenses and permits webpage, we have a transition renew marijuana business license online. So transition is the process that everyone is going to go through in this first year. After this first year, the transition process will be complete. So after all, after you have moved every license into the online permitting and licensing center, that will be a regular sort of renewal cadence. Um, the transition process is a bit different. So on our transition renew a marijuana business online, we do have that information at the very top. We had a webinar um, uh, back in December. And so you can watch that webinar on our YouTube channel. Um, we have a required information and documents checklist that will tell you exactly what you need to gather to transition that license online. Um, we have the same step-by-step -step process, as well as down here, that required information. If you're transitioning, which is considered a renewal, when you're transitioning that, the, those licenses online, and then sort of an overview of the other information you're gonna be required to provide. You will not be able to submit a change of location or change of ownership or modification of premise until you have completed this transition. Um, if it's not time to renew, if your renewal is in six months, but you need to do a change of location because, for example, you've been um, evicted or, um, or facing eviction, or you're going to otherwise lose possession of your premise, or you need to modify your premise in some way, you do have to transition those licenses online before you can submit that application. We will not take a paper application for a change of location or change of ownership um, you will be required to transition them, even if your renewal is six months away. If your renewal is six months away and you're transitioning your license for the purpose of submitting an amendment application, you can request a prorated fee before you pay fees. So when you see that pay fees due button, when you transition your license, don't pay the fee. You'll reach out to EXL applications at denvergov.org and um, you will request a fee proration because you are transitioning your licenses outside of their normal renewal window for the purpose of submitting an amendment application. We did send a bulletin about this information with fee information. We sent that bulletin, um, I believe in early January. 
And if you need a copy of that bulletin, I would um, encourage you to reach out to uh, marijuanainfo at denvergov.org. I have a PDF copy of that on my desktop as well. Um, but that bulletin went over you know, what you need to do to request a fee proration if you're outside of that regular renewal window. So again, if my licenses don't expire until September, technically I should not be renewing them because that's outside of that 90 day renewal window, but I need to submit a change of location application. I have to transition my licenses first. I can transition, complete the application, not pay the fees, request the fee proration, and then once the fees are prorated, pay for that um, transition. After the transition is all approved, then I can submit my change of location application. And, and just to clarify again, those proration fees could still be quite expensive. So prorate does not mean waive the fees. Yes. <laughs> yes. And if you do have questions about that, that fee um, bulletin, you can request that through marijuana info at denvergov.org, but it was sent in early, I believe it was early um, January. Two questions um, we have. What if you have not yet identified an on-site manager? You do have to, that is a required field. You have to, you have to provide information and in that on-site manager information. And later, you'll be able to amend that information in your on-site manager. And I don't believe, Audra, and you can confirm um, that there is no cost to update an on-site manager or on-site contact information. Correct, there's, okay. there's no uh, fee for that. Great, so Jim, if you have, let's say you're moving and you're not really sure who's gonna be um, you know, steering the ship for a little bit there, um, you could provide the owner's information, um, you could provide, um, you know, um, the current, like the sort of current facilities on-site manager information. And then later when you do identify who that's going to be, you can amend that information at no cost. Um, the system really gives you a lot more transparency and ability to update your contact information, which is really critical, I think, for customers and for us, um, so that we're always aware of who we should be contacting about different issues with your license. Um, you also asked, can you transition well before renewal time? Um, great question. And so we just sort of answer that. Um, yes, the answer to that is yes, you can transition before renewal time. We would encourage you to not do that unless you're submitting an amendment application. So transition outside of that normal window, if you need to complete a transfer of ownership, transfer of location, modification of premise, um, transition those records then. If not, wait until your normal renewal time. And within that 90 day window, we actually sort of want you to wait until about two weeks before your expiration date, maybe two, three to two weeks before your expiration date to submit your transition application. That's gonna give us plenty of time to review the application to determine um, whether there are corrections that need to be made um, and still get those new licenses issued before the license expires. Um, when you transition your license, Again, this is, this is outlined in that fee bulletin that we discussed. When you transition your license, the very first time, the expiration date of your license will change, which is why we recommend that you, you um, transition your license closer to its current expiration date. You obviously want to provide uh, yourself some flexibility um, so that you're not, um, you don't have an expired license. That's why we sort of recommend that two to three week period before the current expiration date. But when we approve the transition, the expiration date changes. So it may be two weeks before your previous expiration date. And then after that, the expiration date on your licenses um, wouldn't change year to year if you're just doing your normal renewal cadence. That's all outlined in that fee bulletin too. Um, I think it may be a little clearer there. So if you have questions about that, I would recommend reaching out to marijuana info at denvergov.org and we can get that information over to you. So we have answered those two questions. Any other questions here? Sort of get the sense that next week when we're talking about changes of ownership, um, we are going to be using the full 90 minutes um, because there are different things that you can do with the change of ownership. Um, and I am going to have to have one of my colleagues sort of help um, just as a preview to that conversation. Um, there are different amendments for different actions. 
Um, a full change of ownership is Joey LLC selling to Audra LLC. That is a full change of ownership. Action is required on my part. It's required on Audra's part. Um, if I'm just updating Joey LLC to include um, new controlling beneficial owners or new owner licensees, um, then that is a different amendment. So we're gonna go through the different amendments that you would use to initiate transfers of ownership next week. And if time permits, um, I'd really like to go through the concurrent transfer of ownership and transfer of location, because that happens enough time uh, throughout the year that I think it would be really helpful if we, we have a baseline understanding of how to, to use that um, function. Again, these are all sort of much more streamlined functions than when we were taking paper applications. I think over time, what you're going to see is that um, the system creates a lot of value and efficiency, not only for the customer, but for the department, which is going to hopefully allow us to process applications um, more quickly. We have, um, for some context, over the last um, three months, we have transitioned um, uh, more than 250, 260 licenses, which is a, roughly a third of our licenses. Um, so we've seen a lot of amendments. Um, we have been absolutely sort of overwhelmed with the number of applications. We did not anticipate that that many renewals were going to happen. Um, so there may be some delay in, in getting answers to certain questions, um, but we're working as quickly as we can. And now that we've worked through uh, a third of the licenses, a really huge batch of our licenses, um, we anticipate that throughout the rest of the year, we're gonna have a sort of a more normal cadence of folks transitioning their licenses, um, which will hopefully, uh, that's where we'll start to see more of our efficiencies. Super. And if it looks like no other questions, we're going to cut this short. We're about 35 minutes early. Um, I appreciate everyone who showed up today. Like I said, this information is going to be posted on our website. Um, the webinar will be posted on our website as well. Um, if you have any questions, if you're needing support with the online system, remember, email exlapplications at denvergov.org. Do not copy other aliases. Do not copy other individuals. Just the Excel applications at denvergov.org. Um, and you can request support for whatever issue you may be encountering with the system, or if you need a fee proration. Uh, thank you so much for, for coming, and we will um, see you hopefully next week. Take care.